Sometimes stories are truer than the truth. Nerd Soul. Late LK at one youngster holding it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. What is up, my people, today? Oh, yeah, coming with another wonderful episode of On Screen. We are moving fast, quick, getting through this season. Only one episode left. But before we get started, we got some, some house cleaning to handle. Of course, we're here on American Gods doing our thing, having a good time. You talking to me, me talking to you, we having fun, all that good stuff. Y'all talking together. Great. But next week, I'll be chilling not only with my girl, Jace Nicole, she's the bomb. You know her from the premiere. She sent some video in. She's great. She's awesome. Super cool. But I will also be hanging out with your boy, Solar Gray of Back in the Deck Productions. We going to have a ball all three of us going to get together talk about the finale have a good time it'll be super cool now some quick house clean get through you know what i'm saying big shout out to all you guys who came through on american guys if this is your first time checking me out thank you for watching thank you for talking with me down in the comments love y'all conversations going on the theories the back and forth all that good stuff as long as y'all keep it respectful i'm down with that now all that all that's out of here we done we got things to get to because we got a world where there's old guys, new guys, crazy guys, alive guys and dead guys. And we're talking about American guys. And the, there's something huge that happened this episode, but we're going to save that after the break because things did happen here that we need to get to. Uh, the first thing I want to get into is Mama G and Laura. Um, the conversation that they have together is a very nuanced one. If you pay, you know, if you if you look at it and watch it a couple of times, you get a nuanced conversation because, you know, she's like, yo, I need to drop some blood. Mama G like, you think that's what this is really about? You know what I'm saying? And then she tried, she tried to, you know, try to press it a little bit. Mama G got to come out with the realness. She like, look, hey, what you want? You want the good Mama G or you want the bad Mama G? Because I got both of them for it. So let me know what you want. But when you know she actually you know she comes back and they're like look let's talk let's see if we can be respectful and laura actually i think laura actually absorbs something she listens she she pays attention and realizes that maybe just maybe that there's there's more to this whole drops of love thing than maybe she thought in the first place because she figured yo i'm i just need to find somebody you know prick their finger or something bloop, bloop, and i'm done and Mama G, you know, poses it to her like, hey, maybe, maybe just maybe this is deeper than you think. Maybe this is easier in a deeper way than you think. And with that said, I really want to know where Laura goes, what Laura does, what she says from now on after that knowledge happens. Now, slide out of the way. I want to talk about something that's very interesting with Bill Quiss's motivations, her evolution, her thoughts, ideas, plans. We get to her in this episode and she is essentially the new pastor. Um, we don't know what happened to the old pastor, but I'm going to just say he probably, he probably, uh, he probably, uh, went into the abyss and we find her here kind of like preaching under the cover of, you know, I guess Jesus or the Lord's name or Christianity, but she's, she's definitely weaving her magic all through that. And not only is this smart, but it is conniving and crafty, but like they've said through the times they have had to evolve and change and move and do their thing. Now, with that said, I wanted to say this. The reason why I think it's smart is one of the bad things that I don't like about not only Christianity, but you know, religions in general there's a lot of people that worship their pastor instead of worshiping god um and i think that's where bill Qu bill Quist knows this i mean bill Quist, she says she older than dirt she's been out there thousands of years or whatever before odin even came through so i think that she knows she like we in a day and time where people you know pastor said this pastor said that oh pastor so great pra and people are really worshiping their pastor instead of worshiping God. And I think she's 
positioned herself to be one of those types of pastors that get worshipped, you know, because people are funny and people are wrong and people are weird and people are, you know, messy. So I think she knows that and straight up, you know what I'm saying? Check yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you worship in your bishop, if you worship in your pastor, if you worship in someone, maybe, maybe you need to just check yourself and check what you're doing. I'm going to leave it right there. Now, right before the break, I want to talk about your boy, Salim. Um, you know what? I like Salim. I don't think Salim should be here. I think Salim is in danger. He is a nice man, should be somewhere safe because whatever is going on, it's people keep ending up dead, all right? It is not safe for Salim to be around. But that said, I do like the way that he consoled or at least tried to console <laughs> Mad Sweeney. And it shows the kind of person he is. And Salim is a guy that I've always, you know, since he first showed up, I was like, I don't know why he's here. But now that he's stuck around, you know what, Salim's cool with me. I think he's in danger. I still think he might take an L, but Salim is a good guy. Now, we've got tons of stuff to get into. We done, we done crossed all the preliminary stuff. Prelim's out the way. Prelim's gone. Sign, notified, notarized, all that, out of here. But we gotta get to your boy. That's right. <laughs> Mad to the swing. In just a second, because first, Cure Brand's gonna help us pay them bills. Oh, yeah, take that link below, hat shirts, hoodies, all that jazz. And once you find something you like, of course, cop it. Now, let's get into your boy, Mad Sweeney. Oh, first, I'm going, we got to pour out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Pour out a little liquor. You know, it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I, you know, I'll, I'll get that before we even get started. You know, it's so hard to say goodbye because we're dealing with him now hearing all these sirens, seeing the ants on him and stuff, and not knowing where he is or what's going on with his mind. Also, we're hearing the siren song. So he knows something wrong. And even when he's walking around, he's recounting these moments of his history, which is what I want to talk about now. We get into this extremely interesting history of his, of this, this guy who is a fighter. He's he's a god king. He's a you know he, you know amazing abilities and, and and fighting alongside his I, I guess his worshipers and you know protecting people and and being this upstanding representation of like of of justice and good and all that and just seeing how far he's fell and we still don't get into why. Well, no, we get into why, I guess, but we don't get into how he ends up under Odin. But with that said, I love how they handled the wife and daughter. I love how they handled his uh, his mental stability at that time. And I love how they handled the story of the Grey Monks and also the battle after the story of the Grey Monks with all the, uh, all the gods coming into Ireland. Very interesting, great acting on uh, Paul... Can't remember his last name, but great acting on his part and just the the sets, the way it was done, the production level, fantastic. But I mean, it's always been fantastic on the show, but I just wanted to remark on it because from going from funeral home all the way to whatever century Ireland, you know, it still ended up looking great in both moments. And straight up, God King Mad Sweeney looked sweet, had the cool hair and the blue face stuff. I'm like, can we get, could we get more of that? Could we, matter of fact, can we take away the episode um, about the girl from Ireland that was stealing stuff and coming to America? Can we replace that with a Mad Sweeney episode with just him beating up people and fighting? That would have been dope. But with that said, in this episode, we deal with his memory a lot. He recounts his memory with Billquist, and she's wondering, what story are you telling? What's going on? What's the true memory? And he gets lost in that memory. Then. Speaks again with Celine. Now, after he straight does Celine wrong, Celine opened the door for you. Being nice for you, man. What's your problem? Anyway, let it slide. He know he knows something wrong with him. But 
he's recounting his memories. He gets lost in his memories again and not really knowing what's true and true-ish, even talking with Selim. Now, with that said, we know something's wrong after Laura leaves because the further he gets away from his coin, the worse things get. You know, homie was, you know, trying to get down to New Orleans. It was horrible, right? So he's under the bridge, looking like he dead. Shadow gets him. They have a conversation. In the conversation, he says something like, we are the same. Very interesting statement. Think of me, think it's more, more real and more true and closer to home than Shadow thinks it is. But we are the same. They get up, you know, they go back. And when they're talking about like returning, we get Odin, we get uh, the Jen and all them. They having a little powwow and they're like, look, man, I don't know if Bill quits down. You know what I'm saying? She only out for herself. And you know, Odin, like we all out for ourselves. And in that moment, Shadow's like, yo, check it. I don't know if you know, but your boy, man, Sweeney ain't looking good. And notice nobody budges. Nobody cares. Nobody's interested. Nobody, everybody's like, oh, uh, you know, whatever. And that let me know, like once he came in, he was like, yo, man, Mad Sweeney, I don't, he ain't looking too good. I mean, I think the brother got the flu. And, and nobody cared. I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> oh boy. I think Sweeney gone. But see, I was thinking Sweeney was going to be gone next episode. They, they, they jumped me quick. They was like, nah, bro, mm -mm, we ain't got to wait. So with that said, past all that, Sweeney's still dealing with this, struggling to remember what his memories are. Uh, he's similar to like a Wolverine in this case, where he has memories, but he doesn't know the order and, and why and who and when, and blah, blah, blah. So steps into Ibis. And Ibis is, says, I'm writing your earliest history. Once he said that, you can see on Sweeney's face, he's like, okay, I know what, I know why the sirens are here. I, I know. I, I know why they're here. You know what I'm saying? But an important statement there is when they're talking about, about what happens or what happened, there's a very interesting statement of stories are truer than the truth. And it's, it's similar to the statement that you've heard, you know, a lie can get around the world before truth can get its shoes on, you know? And, you know, the storyteller, you know, the storyteller isn't concerned with the truth. And what's interesting, and I want you guys to always question this, you know, especially if you, if you hear with me, no matter what you hear, I want you to always question stuff. And you can apply this in the world we live in now, whether you at school, whether you at work, whatever. Take into account who's saying it, why they saying it, when they're saying it, and, and, and how it's said. Because of course, like you said, look, story's truer than truth. Storyteller ain't, ain't worried about that. A storyteller weaves what he wants to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's an, it's an imaginative telling, if you will. Or if you look at Obi-Wan, he said, you know, from a certain point of view. So it's like, you just, Remember, you know, if you hang out with me, just remember like, hey, look, I'm not saying you got to be paranoid, but just when something gets said to you, even if it hits your gut a little wrong, just be like, why did that person say that? Now, with that said, we all know, you know, the, sp the spear back, all right? Odin, hit your boy Shadow with the spear. He like, look, you need to protect this with your life. And see, Odin, look, we, we going to talk about Odin later, later. Just look, hey, just keep that in your head, all right? So Shadow's chilling, got the, got the spear on the bed. You know, your boy Sweeney like, yo, check it. What's going down? I want to have a, I, can I wrap a taste? And the interesting part here is, I want you to promise me that when death, when death is near, when something, something going down, that you'll step out the way and save yourself and be cool. And this is all in preparation because this is before he even talked to Ibis. So this is all in preparation. Like, I think I know what's going on and... I think I'm a. I think I'm gonna throw a rock at the throne, and when we get downstairs, everybody's eating, chilling, and stuff. And Shadow's there, and you know, of course, your boy Sweeney finally realizes, oh, I killed Odin way back, and now Odin's done whatever he's done to get him to owe him. Now you know he ain't feeling too good. I wouldn't feel good either. So. He rushes in. You know what goes down. He like, look, I want to speak. I want to talk to you. Everybody get up out of here. How do you, 
you feel? Let me know. How do you think Shadow should have left? Because to a certain degree, I feel like Shadow should have been on some, look, my name Bennett, I ain't in it. But I do see the perspective of, hey, I am here to do a job. I'm here to protect this thing. And that's, that's what I'm going to do. So I do see that side. But I think two men having their own personal beef supersedes that. Like, say, say if you, you got your boy, you and your boy, you and your girl, all right? They hanging out. And you see someone come up and they have a personal beef, something that you like, yo, you know old and dirty. Y'all got a personal beef. Now, I might not let him kill you, but y'all got to scrap. You know what I'm saying? Look, y'all got to scrap. Y'all got to work that out because that's a personal beef between you and him. You know what I'm saying? So, and notice, Odin ain't get up from that table. That, on some deceitfulness, that's some boss stuff. Odin didn't stop taking a bite, son. Odin was like, I ain't tripping on you, which is interesting because that's a that's an ill gamble, son. What if Shadow was like, what if Shadow was like, you know what? I did promise you this. I'm a I'm a fall back. You know what I'm saying? Because Odin was mad confident on that joint that he was gonna come through. And maybe he was figuring, yo, he ain't got the lucky coin, even if I have to fight him. But that that, that was a that was an interesting gamble right there. Now, guys, last thing I want to touch on. Tell me what you think about Odin and his deceit. Here's what I want to know. Do you think his deceit will be his downfall? His deceit seems to has been seems to have been his rise. The reason we all follow him, the reason that everybody got his back is because he's been deceitful all the way through. Do you think that same deceit will be his fall? Um, because that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm feeling. But guys, holla at me. I'm holla at you. Down in them comments, let's talk American guys. Whatever your theory is, who you like, who you don't like, who you want to get together, whatever. I'm down to talk about it. And next week, come back because we got an extravaganza plan for you. Okay, maybe it's not extravaganza, but it's extravaganza-ish. So, before I bounce, I'm going to tell you guys to hit up thatnerdsoul.com. That's right. Check me out right there. All my videos from the oldest, newest, latest, greatest, and all that. They hit up shop thatnerdsoul.com and pick yourself up a t-shirt player. Don't forget to get one for them playettes. Then, come back here, like, comment, subscribe, and share that nerd soul. Don't even think about trying to hold it down before checking out your boy on them YouTubes. You know, let everybody know that I'm here and I'm doing cool stuff. And then, <laughs> I want you to be good to yourselves. Be good to each other because I gotta give a shout out to LA and RVA, you got my heart. Now, for next week, remember, or unless you wanna check me out on Tuesday for the Avengers Endgame review, I'll be here on Tuesday too. But, yo, just remember, be safe. Be super duper safe. We're never handling a spear. Peace.